What's up, everybody? Before we start today's episode, I just wanted to give a huge shout out to our sponsor, Loco Bounce. Loco Bounce is founded by Tim Arvin and Dalton Rockhold, and they do everything from bounce, bouncy house rentals to slide rentals to several other services. They service Bell Fountain, Logan County, and the surrounding areas. If you're, you or anybody is interested in Loco Bounce, look them up on Facebook or give 937 210 7881 a call. And with that being said, let's get started. episode of the huddle my name is Irvin Godinez I'm Colby Bart today we have an incredible guest on I'm very excited to have him on he was a varsity basketball coach at Riverside for five years he was a, there for seven years total um, one year he coached JV and one year he coached junior high basketball uh, now he's been with Indian Lake for two years as a varsity assistant coach and recently just helped them go 19 and 6 and 10 and 0 in conference um, and recently also just won CBC championship so let's welcome coach Bodemiller yeah I appreciate it guys thanks for having me on here man. of course I'm really excited to have you on today coach um, and I know we were talking a little bit before just kind of overheard some stuff but yeah. um, I want you to start from where you started going to school and what that was like. Yeah, so originally I'm from Jackson Center, Ohio, and so just about 20 minutes from, from Riverside is where I grew up and everything. And uh, Jackson Center now, you know, is pretty well known for basketball, at least in, in the boys' realm. Like girls, volleyball is king over there, you know. Mm -hmm. And so uh, from the boys' side, though, it's, it's, it's pretty well known as a basketball school now. It wasn't always like that. You know, we had, like when I, I remember being in, elementary school and the teams were pretty good but then once I got to like middle school you know the teams weren't as hot like they were still okay and then my freshman year um we went two and 18 or oh. something like that the varsity team did so yeah. uh kind of a rough kind of a rough stretch mm -hmm. and and the summer between my freshman and sophomore year was really uh really key in my growth as a as a player as a person overall um you know, I wasn't, I didn't start playing basketball until seventh grade. So very like on Jackson center, like, right. of me, you yeah. know, and so, uh, so I didn't start playing until like seventh grade. So I think we had 13 guys on the team in my class then. And I was like number 12. Yeah. And then like the next year there was like 11 and I was like number 10. And so I just kept like, I just kept sticking with it. And after my freshman year, uh, I have two older sisters. And so, um, they played sports in junior high and mm -hmm. they were there more for the social part and yeah. like the competitive nature of it. And so uh, after my freshman year, my dad had a conversation with me just like he had with them. He was like, hey, if you're going to do this thing, like, you better do it because we can't afford to put three kids through college. And so either keep working, like either put the time in that you need to or quit, go get a job, you know, and start, start planning for your future and stuff like that. So I didn't want to quit, you know what I mean? And so I, I did so much work that, that off season from my freshman year. And so by the time we made it back as – as uh, as a sophomore, I was a JV starter after coming off the bench of our freshman team the year before, and then my uh, junior season we uh, we won. I think we went 500 that year. My junior season, I I still played a little JV and varsity both, mm -hmm. um, just as like the eighth guy off the bench in the varsity game. And then my senior year, we had seven seniors in my class stick with it, and I was one of two that ended up as a starter on our varsity team. We finished uh, 16 and six wow. that year, and so and so ever since then. Then Jackson Air hasn't won less than 15 games, you know, and that's been like 14 years now or something like that. So, so yeah, just the the love for the game kind of stemmed from there. Um, and 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 yeah, you know, like we we had a tough kind of a tough ending to my high school career uh, that we'll probably talk about a little later. You know, a tough ending to my high school career, and so that really is what pushed me into coaching yeah. because you know you don't want that bad taste in your mouth forever, you know. And so I just wanted to find a way to reconnect with the game. Um, and, and yeah, so then when I was given the, oppor given the opportunity to coach here at, or at Riverside, um, you know, I, I took advantage of it and, and wanted to see where it could take me. So where uh, or what year would it have been that you would have been a senior at Jackson Center? So I graduated from Jackson Center in 2011. Okay. So, you know, to make matters worse, right, in 2012, the year after, they go undefeated. Uh, oh, wow. And they make it to the state championship game. Wow. And they, Who was on that team? Andy Hoying would have been a year younger okay. than me. Trey Elkert was two years younger than me. Alex Meyer. Sharp shooter. Uh, yeah, you I know. Yeah, yeah, so, so it, you know, it's not fun, right? Like, mm -hmm. like we, had, we had so much 
uh, potential, you know, like looking ahead. We, I think I don't know where I don't know if we ever cracked the top ten in the state. Like we we beat some good teams my senior year, and I was not the guy. Like you know what I mean. Like I was very blessed to be a starter. Um, but we had two dudes that were six five, six six, and we had mm. guards that could just shoot. The, yeah. So I was just really good at like two things, and so <laughs> one of them was being able to shoot the ball, and the other thing was I was I was smart, and so that's. I mean, for your fifth best player, that's really all you need. And exactly. that's what I was able to do. You know, <laughs> yeah. so I was very thankful to, to be in those moments. But, yeah, you know, we I think I think we might have been I want to say we hit like number 13, you know, in the in the AP thing uh, my senior year. And then we got upset in the uh, in the second round. You know, we were kind of looking ahead at who we were going to play, who we we're going to meet at districts, yeah. who we we're going to do this. And again, for a team that had never been there before, like wh who were we? to look at that you know yeah. but we all were you know we didn't take practice very seriously going into those last couple weeks and then and then you know we got humbled pretty badly and then uh and then yeah to turn around the next year uh <laughs> they go state. they go 20 and 0 and then they make it to the state championship game uh they end up they end up losing to their state runners up but still seeing all your friends you know make it to the i mean it was the schottenstein centers where the uh, ohio state was where right. the state finals were played then so to watch all them, you know, celebrate and, and all the fire truck parades and everything that year and like you're in the crowd, dude, is not it's not a fun feeling. <laughs> no, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so so that that was like salt in the wounds. And so yeah, so now now to come back as a coach, you know, it was like, man, I gotta prove that I can that I can do something right. You yeah. know what I mean? And so so it definitely had a lot of that kind of like self driven uh a little bit of ego with it you know at first mm -hmm. like okay i'm gonna do this for me you know i'm gonna i'm gonna show people that like i wasn't just some you know some mistaken basketball player from from the 2011 season like i wanted to kind of make a name for myself that way so we're still working on it you know <laughs> but but priorities are a little different now than, than what they were at that age it's like you think about that and you were the start to the trend yeah and instead of being the trend yeah. and, and and that's that's kind of a hard pill to swallow yeah. sometimes like i mean i think about what you were saying and i think about my sophomore year of high school yeah when ben logan made the state playoff for the first time ever okay and uh i mean i was on the outside looking in i was on the punt team and that was all i did i was on the <laughs> punt team i was on the back i was in the back like the back three but protecting we're protecting the punter and i was always just taking blows man but never got to play like what I wanted to do. And it, it was, and then you think about it and you make the state playoffs and you're just sitting there watching. Right. I was a part of the team. Don't get me wrong, but right. I, didn't, I didn't feel that way. Yeah. And it's weird because, you know, you mentioned you, you were the start, but not the, not you weren't like you were the start of the trend, but weren't the trend. And that's hard to, that's yeah. hard to, <laughs> yeah, hard man, to and, and I'll never forget too. There was a moment in the, uh, I think it was after the Jack Sanders regional final game in 2012. And, uh, you know, so the whole town is mm -hmm. out. They got fire trucks, bus comes in, all the dudes hanging out the windows, like high five and everybody <laughs> and everything. And uh, there was this kid who was, who was maybe in sixth or seventh grade um, who, I, who I knew. And he's like got a like an upset face, you know. He just didn't seem happy, you know. And for for like our community, that was huge, you know. Like yeah, I said, yeah. like basketball over there is is king, right? And um, this kid's just like looking down and all this stuff. And I I told him I was like, what are you so mad about? Like we're going to state. And he looked me dead in my face and said, well, we should have went last year. <laughs> and I never wanted to hit a kid, you know what I mean? But like, <laughs> man, that was probably the closest dude. I was like, oh, oh, okay, like all right. Thanks, and then, man. And then that kid grew up, and his his senior year, they made it to the state final four too and so wow. i'm still left out of the loop you know what i mean like yeah. he's the, you know so uh so yeah i mean it, it's just one of those things and it sounds good to say you know like hey you know you were part of the the rebuild yeah but like i have nothing to show like there's nothing hanging in my house that says it you know what i mean right. and so so for that selfish reason i think again you know like i really wanted to get into the coaching the Absolutely. coaching lane just to see like well what can i do on this side of the ball yeah so, so i mean I'm, i think i like I know a lot of people from Jackson Center, actually, yeah. now that you mentioned it. And, uh, you know, my aunt is a teacher there for the uh, deaf and blind. Oh, yeah. And um, who was the coach when you were there? Uh, Scott Elker was. Is yeah. he, he's, he's still there, so right? He just, so this past season was his first year out. He just retired okay. uh, after my first season at Indian mm -hmm. Lake. So he had coached there in the late 90s um, for a little bit. And then he went to Upper Sandusky and coached there. And then he came back, I want to say the summer between my sixth and seventh grade year, mm -hmm. he came back and took over. And things were so different, man. Like, uh, <laughs> like you know, I said that summer between my freshman and sophomore year is when, when things really turned around for us because mm -hmm. we went 2-18 and 18 
that season the varsity team did and uh you know coach elkert comes in and and he was already there like that was his i think third or fourth year in a row but he knew he had good talent coming up and so man he just poured everything into us so we started doing like overnight practices which is insane like now we think about like we would come in at like two o'clock on a friday and over the summer and and we would leave two o'clock on sunday you know we would not we wouldn't walk out of the gym until two o'clock on sunday and it was great like it was a blast looking back great memories obviously yeah. now but it was not fun why like, you know he we walked in one time he had the the scoreboard set for 90 minutes <laughs> i'm like oh this doesn't look good you know what i mean I'm, we're like y'all getting warmed up and stuff and uh he blows the whistle at two o'clock and he's like all right full court layups and then <laughs> oh, he starts the minutes? clock for 90 minutes dude yeah we had to do so we're doing full court layups for 90 minutes. And <laughs> that like, is unheard of. Yeah, and every 10 minutes he would he would blow his whistle and he'd say, okay, now pull up at the pull up at the elbow. Mm-hmm. Now we're going to cross over half court, do reverse layup. You know, and so anyway, so we're just dogging it, dude. There's like 20 of us maybe. So, so split into 10 and then you're going, there's no time for rest, you know. And so the buzzer goes off. He's like, all right, get water. And so we're thinking like, thank God, dude, that was awful. And we come back in, there's another 90 minutes on the clock and coach just goes, all right, left hand. And then we had to do the same thing, opposite side, man. And so, yeah, dude. And then I, we slept on the gym floor. Jackson Irish gym did not have air conditioning. So we're in like middle of June, just mm. dripping sweat. They had these two big, like those two big industrial fans or whatever, you know, and they had those by the door. So the players all got one of them at one side of the gym. The coaches were all at the other side of the gym. They slept on the floor too, you know. Oh, so the coaches stayed yeah, too. Yeah, okay. we were all locked in. And so, and it was like the haves and have nots, dude. One dude had a hammock that he brought, like a self supported <laughs> hammock. And we all felt so mad at him. Like, right. who do you think you are getting a hammock? So we spent the whole night just flipping him out of that hammock. Like, you're going to sleep on the floor down here with the rest of us, but Like, I don't know who you think you are. And uh, so then at 6 a.m., coach would hit the horn on the scoreboard to wake us all up. Bro. And he'd say, all right, practice starts in 40 minutes. Get your breakfast, get showered, whatever. And so, yeah, man, it was, it was some crazy. So we did like three or four of those. A, dude. S- a summer from my sophomore year dude. to my senior year. That was pretty wild. And he'd have like, he would have teams come in. So we'd practice, you know, we'd practice like, let's say at two o'clock, practice till 4.30, have dinner maybe. We'd play some sort of game or something to pass a little bit of time. But then he'd have a team show up uh, and we'd <laughs> scrimmage for like two hours and then they would leave. And we, we wouldn't, we'd still be there. You know, like they'd go home to their families and like pizza and we'd still be like, all right. And, and so, and yeah, sandwiches. man, so, like, get your packed lunch out, you know, or whatever it was, <laughs> you know, and so, uh, so, yeah, so we, uh, we would, and he, he'd, he'd work in some fun games, yeah. you know, like, we played dodgeball one time, but he didn't get dodge. he just used basketballs, like, we just rolled out the men's ball, and it was like, uh, is this allowed? I don't know if this is allowed, you know, and so, <laughs> and, and uh, the best was, though, we'd play hide and seek throughout the school, well, the Jackson School is two stories, and it's all – it used to be. They've, they've remodeled since then, but it's all, like, segmented. So, you know, mm-hmm. um, and they would be, like, remodeling. And so there'd be all kinds of stuff in the hallways. It'd be pitch black, Jeez. and you'd be running full speed playing hide-and-seek, and you'd just drill a table or, like, hit a <laughs> desk or something and just get all busted up. So, but anyways, I'm going on for, for two. You know, I love it, yeah. man. Because, I mean, you mentioned how, you know, in the moment it wasn't as fun as you are, you know, talking about it now, laughing right. about it, telling sure. all these great stories about it. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, it does sound like a good time, but I wasn't the one that had to be yeah, there. Yeah, we were doing sprints for 90 minutes, Irv. <laughs> Come on, man. Like, yeah, it's a lot of fun when you're on a couch, you know, like 15 years removed from it. I'm, sure. just, I'm just thinking, like, in my head. I'm hypothetically thinking of a situation where this happened, right? And I'm just laying there after doing 90 minutes of layups, <laughs> left hand, right hand. And I, I have to be sitting there with my teammates just like, we have to be good this year. Yeah, man. We yeah. have to be good. Yeah, like, well, this has to be worth it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and that's, and that's kind of like, I mean, that's what sports is about. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, how much are you willing to sacrifice you know, to where it's still worth it, you know, even without the dividends sometimes. Because sometimes, I mean, you know, when you can't control winning just like anybody else can, mm-hmm. you know. So, like, you use hope and you have faith that what you're doing is going to pay off, but it's blind. You know, you don't know if that, yeah. if it's real. So, yeah, man. 
Um, so did you guys do that throughout your entire four years of high school or like where did that actually start? So that started, like I said, so after that, after my freshman year is when that kind of started. Okay. And so, uh, you know, we had a really good freshman who was a year younger than me. He ended up, he ended up being player of the year in the state of Ohio. Wow. Went to Mercyhurst University in Pennsylvania, which is D2 what was and his, what was Andy Hoying. Yep. Yeah, and, uh, and mm -hmm. he actually coaches there now. He's like on their staff at least. Okay. Um, so we had a really, we had a really good player behind me and then the class the year after that um, had a really good class and so coach just knew that like if we could get the thing going mm -hmm. then we would keep it going and so it, it was not fun but like you know getting like it's kind of like you know inertia right so like once it's in motion it'll stay in motion yeah. but the dude that has to get it in motion he's got he's got some work to do yeah. and so you know like you were saying earlier like being a part of that group like it's fun but there's not there's not a poster of me hanging in the wall like on the walls in Jackson Center, like there is of that team that was after me. Yeah, you know? yeah. And so, you know, it's crazy that he mentions this and talks about these teams and stuff because I was that kid that was watching. I was that kid. My grandpa used to take us to Jackson Center every single weekend growing up on a Friday night or like a Saturday evening to go watch basketball. We yeah. used to go stop at the Wendy's in Belfast <laughs> and make our way to Jackson Center. And dude, it's crazy because you're saying these names and I'm like. That's like 11 year old Cole, like just sitting there watching basketball. I mean, you don't have to do me like that. Man. I know I'm older than you, <laughs> but come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. But like, <laughs> but like, you know, shortly after that, you have uh, um, the Sosbys. Yeah. They, they were there, and I knew them really well personally. Like, I'm really close with the Sosbys. Yeah. But um, there was another kid that went to um, University of Finley that was there. Yeah, Brady Wildermuth. Wildermuth. Yep. And those, those people, and and it's crazy because this is my childhood, and it it should come, come like it's full circle, man. I'm sitting here and I'm Being like, from Ben Logan, how come you guys would make the trip over to Jackson? Like, my grandpa was very close with the Sosbys, okay. um, and I think one of them is a chiropractor, mm, or is that somebody else? May, I'm, I mean, maybe you know, what I mean, like <laughs> so, there, so there's there's the Jackson yeah. Center chiropractor, yeah, and my grandpa was really close with him, swore on him. That's where I went to when I was having problems in high school, yeah. whatever. And he he would always stay in touch with my grandpa and talk about you know Jackson Center basketball, Jackson Center basketball. Well, my seventh and eighth grade year was kind of I forget who was would have been seniors then. It probably would have been Wildermuth or he would have been in high he would, school. Yeah, he would have been he would have been a couple years out because he graduated in seventeen. Yeah. So yeah, nineteen would have been like a Trent Platfoot maybe would have been in that class. Yeah. You know, so mm -hmm. so uh and there were um Bryce Sosby would have been in twenty eighteen. Yeah. So he would have been a year younger still but So they at the time Bryce was like dude, I, I remember if you wanted to go to I mean, a high school basketball camp, you go to Jackson Center High School Basketball Camp, <laughs> yeah, man. And we were there, and Bryce would have been around my age. I went there with uh, Garrett Allen, mm. and uh, we roll up, and Bryce is doing jump training and doing all this stuff, and then goes in and does the, does the camp. And, dude, I just remember looking up to some of those people when I was trying to become a basketball player and Jackson Center basketball camp was the camp to get to. Yeah, man, and, and it's crazy how that changed too because, you know, uh, so like I helped out just my senior year or the mm -hmm. summer after my senior year because like I said, I wasn't super talented. I just worked hard, you yeah. know, and so um, so Coach had Coach Elgar had me come in and help out with the camp my after my senior year and then every year I was in college, he had me come back and help. So I was, you know, like significantly older than the high school yeah. I was still helping, right? Uh, and uh, and anyways, but coach kind of knew my heart and knew that I wanted to go down that lane and go down that path. And so uh, he he kind of took me under his wing and, and did all that stuff, which was really cool. But but like I said, so my senior year, the year after my senior year, you know, like we had a good season, like nothing nothing too crazy for that time. It was it was the best season they had had for a little bit. But uh, man, the, once they went to state though. You would talk about that kids camp. I think they had, I think they had seventy five elementary kids come to the sum, that next summer camp. Oh my! You know, man. and so I'm helping out. And the year before, there was maybe like forty. You know, yeah. so we almost, like it almost doubled because and it wasn't it wasn't just because like oh now the kids in Jackson Center are excited. It was yeah. kids from Anna, Indian Lake, you know, all over the place converging. 
because like when like success breeds success you know what i mean and so like when they see it happen it's like okay i want to be a part of that and we had or i keep saying we like i still live in jackson you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? but like and jackson had a lot of kids transfer in you know like uh, a kid from the lake transferred in, a kid from anna transferred in you know because just like when you see the thing going you want to be a part of it you know and and so so yeah so uh it is, it is kind of crazy to think about like seeing it from from that perspective and, and i think about like the stuff we were just talking about and then i think back to my coaching yeah. career obviously i'm not the same person that, that coach elkert is everybody that that i've talked to that doesn't know him like uses the word crazy you know in their description of like he's he and, and from the story that i just told you, you probably tell a little bit he's a little bit he uh he's a little bit uh we'll call it passionate you know what yeah, I mean? yeah. like, he's a little passionate when it comes to it um but man i think about some of the stuff i went through like a Jackson and it was like, okay, if like if I did one of those things at Riverside, like how long am I coaching here? You know, like if I tried to do an overnight camp, you know, like you know what I'm saying, like if I tried to do that at Riverside, I might have four kids come, you know what I mean? And so what well, I'm supposed to like get a tent out for yeah. me and four kids, like that's super creepy. Like it was just all you know, like so it, it would not have gone well, I don't think. But. I do want to go in order here. Yeah, sure. Because uh, I, I want to talk about that thing you said that happened your senior year. But before we get into that, I'm going to jump forward ahead. Um, I want to talk, since you went to Jackson Center, and I genuinely did not know that, yeah. um, how did it feel playing them this year and then also beating them? Like, yeah. what what is that feeling like? Like, that's my old school. This is the school I'm coaching at now. What is that kind of – what is that? Yeah, man. Um, so – so I get the job at Riverside, right? Yeah. And so I'm 23 years old. And it's funny because so the first year I was at Riverside, I was the JV coach. And Jackson is our last game of the year. Oh, okay. And so, you know, just something I'm looking forward to the whole time. Because the JV coach at that time, who's now the varsity coach, at oh. Jack, he took over for coach, okay. was a year ahead of me in school. You know, and so so um, had a lot of respect for him. You know, he was a really good athlete and all this stuff. And um, so anyway, so we go to we go to play the last game of the year and yeah. JV doesn't have a tournament. So it is literally my last game of the year. And we play Jackson and and it was a tough game. We ended up winning and, wow. I, and it was at Riverside. Yeah. And I remember thinking like, yeah, that was good. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. like that, was, that was a cool moment. Right. And then the next year I become the varsity coach. And so we have to play at Jackson. Uh, you know, and so my first it's it's the, and go. it's the last game of the year, right? Yeah. It's the last game of the year. And so, you know, the the announcer for the game when they announced like in Riverside's head coach is former Jackson Center alumni, you know, mm-hmm. Seth Bodemiller. And like I just remember like people cheering and I was like, Okay, like this will be this'll go one of two ways, you know. And Jackson was way better than we were. You know, what I mean like I said, I our JV team won that that year prior, but Jackson was a way better team than we were. So I was just hoping to keep it close, keep it competitive. And, and it was for a little bit, you know, we got smoked, right? And so then, so for f- all five years that I was at Jackson, or that I coached against Jackson at Riverside, I think we were, we were close, maybe, and when I say close, like within 10, maybe like once mm-hmm. out of those times, because they were just so much, so far superior to us, um, especially at the end of the year. You know, like if we would play right. at the beginning, we right. might be able to shock them with just preparation. Yeah. But like when they get into their tournament mode, like it is such a different animal. And that's why, I mean, that's why they have gone to districts so many years, you know, consecutively. And uh, so anyway, so I jump over to Indian Lake, you know, for these last two years. And last year, Jack Sanders' team was stellar. You know, mm-hmm. like they lost, they lost their first game of the year and then rattled off 21 straight. Mm-hmm. And Indian Lake was one of those, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. they and, and when we came in, I just kept telling our guys, you know, like, this is not the Jackson Center team that you guys are used to. You know what I mean? Like, these guys are good, good. Like, every last name in Jackson Center that you can think of, there's a kid on this team with that last name. Like, it was like it was just like the perfect storm of talent yeah. in this team last year. And uh, so we come into it, and I'm like, whatever you guys think is going to work, they're going to take – whatever you think you do well, they're going to take that away from you. You know what I mean? Like, they're that good. Like, it's yeah. like playing against the computer, you know, on a video game. Some like, NPCs, man. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's like they're, like, they're robotic about it. They're super methodical. And, and Coach Elker knew what he was doing. He knew that was going to be the class to end on, right? That was his youngest kid. He has five kids, so mm-hmm. his youngest kid was in that class. Okay. And, so, and so now this year, this past year, like, they graduate their whole starting five. Right, so it's a brand new lineup. We graduated only one guy from our from our team last year, and he was maybe our seventh guy coming mm-hmm. off the bench. So we had our whole crew with us. Plus, we added a freshman who was pretty spectacular, you know, in Brody Risinger. And so when we're getting ready for Jackson Center, it was it was around Christmas, I think, and uh, 
Coach O was like, Seth, why don't you take the scouting report for this? And I was like, oh, I'll take this. Yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> because now the head coach is the same coach that I coached against when I was the JV coach. You know, so again, okay, that, okay. that mutual respect, like, like you know, just goes way back. And so I was like, oh, I got something for him. You know, and so I put I put together what I thought, you know, and I'm not trying to sound that way at all. But uh, but I put a lot of time into my, my game plan for that one in my scouting report. And so... I think we ended up winning by 20, yeah, it something close. like that. You know? Get so, some. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and I'll never forget, so my wife, uh, my wife's from Jackson Center as well, and so okay. she has a cousin that's still a player. He was a, he was a sophomore for him this year and played in the varsity, like mm -hmm. came off the bench for him this year. And uh, my wife's aunt and uncle came up to her after the game at the lake, and she got, <laughs> her aunt says, yeah, you know, 20 points, that's pretty respectable or something like that. <laughs> and that felt so good, you know what I mean? Because <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. like, and, and granted, it would have been cool to beat Coach Elkert once, you yeah. know, but right. like, it, it was still, I, I wouldn't say it was as good, but it was still a pretty good feeling. Right. Like, again, knowing that work pays off, you know, was, was, was kind of a cool moment. Yeah, for sure. So, again, I was hoping we could talk about that situation that you mentioned. Uh, what was that thing that happened your senior year that wanted – you know, to keep pushing into basketball. Yeah, man. So, uh, so like I said, my senior year, we, we finished the regular season at 15 and five. We finished, I think third in the conference, but my class just in all of Shelby County was just loaded. You know, we had seven seniors that played four years of high school basketball. I think Rushi had five, uh, Botkins had six, Housen had six, Anna had six, you know, it was like, it was just like the, the pool, which again, kind of helped, Jackson State the year after because all those seniors graduated, right? You know, and, and and out of the seven seniors, like I said, that I was a part of, mm -hmm. only three of us got significant minutes. The other four, you know, helped us out a lot in practice and stuff, but they just didn't get a lot of minutes in games. And uh, so, anyways, it gets to the end of the year. Uh, tournament draw happens. I think we made, we were the three seed, so we were third in the conference. We get the three seed, but like we were playing the bottom team, and like there were other teams that went to the number one and the number two before going to us, which we took as like a sign of respect. Like yeah, like teams would rather play the one seed okay, than play us, you know. So we were we were pretty confident, and so I think we had to play. I want to say it was Bradford in our first game, and they were zero and. 20 I think or something like that you know and so it's hard prepping for a game like that you yeah. know especially especially because none of us were used to winning you know what I mean like we we had all experienced success at different levels but mm. like I said Jack Center wasn't the superpower that it has been these last the last decade you know and so you know yeah. and uh and so it was hard it was a lot of like coach Elkert trying to get us fired up and get us competing but we we were pretty much you know to the of the mindset that yeah we're just gonna show up we're gonna walk out of here and we're gonna move on and that's essentially how we how we played we showed up i think we were up by maybe 15 at halftime uh you know coach elkert comes in the locker room he's ripping us you know like i said we had like six turnovers or something not a lot to be upset about but you know we weren't playing to where he thought mm -hmm. we should be playing and i'll never forget we come out of halftime and the official whose locker room was right next to ours Goes, I was, I'm inbound on the ball to start this third quarter, and the official hands right before he hands me the ball. He goes, "What's your coach so mad at? You guys not winning by enough?" And he just hands me the ball, and I just looked down. I was like, "I don't know what that dude's problem is." And I threw it in. We just kept playing. You know, like yeah. it was, it was tough. Like so, so I think we end up winning. I don't know, twenty something. We we win by against Bradford, and so then. The team we had to play next was Botkins, who was in our conference. I think they had won four games yeah. or something like that. So they weren't super stellar. And uh, but again, they had a lot of seniors. You know, they had a lot of they had a lot of good players. They yeah. just didn't win a lot of games. And the two times we had played them during the season, we'd beat them by twenty. Yeah. You know, and so again, another game where we're just like, all right, we're looking forward to. Uh, if we would beat Botkins, if we beat Botkins, we're thinking on Friday we're gonna play Layman, and the game between us and Layman, it, we beat them by nine or something like that. It was a good battle, and so a lot of us, you know, throughout the week are like, okay, yeah, we just got to get ready for Layman. You know, we're doing this, this, and this. So as we're going through like walkthroughs the day before our Botkins game, like again, I can't speak for all my teammates, but I was not in the right spot, you know, to to take that game seriously, because like, dude, we have we just have better horses than they do. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so it's it's hard to to get yourself there. So we go, uh, I'm in foul trouble immediately. Like, I think I picked up two fouls in maybe 40 seconds. That's not, that's not even a joke. Like, I could pull up the film. Like, I get two fouls crazy quick, which wasn't too bad. You know, like I said, I wasn't like a super key piece. Uh, but then our, our other senior, 
um, who, who was 6'6", six, six, our big guy, who was one of our focal points on offense. He also picked up two fouls quick. So we were both just sitting down watching most of the game. And, and you know how close games are. You know, it comes down to the, to the, to the wire there. And so uh, eventually we're down by one point. I want to say it's like 47, 46, and we foul um, with, with under probably like 15 seconds to go. And so we foul. A kid goes to shoot two free throws, misses both. Right, so we're bringing the ball up the floor there, and so it was probably less. It was probably less than ten seconds actually, but so um, Andy Hoing, who was a year younger than me, um, the next year would be the player of the year at State of Ohio, our best player clearly on our team that year. Even um, he gets the rebound, he starts bringing the ball up the floor, and I'm spotting up in the left corner, which was pretty much where I occupied ninety percent of our offensive possessions. I was just standing in the corner yeah. waiting for somebody to pass <laughs> me the ball, and so I go spot up in the left kind of left wing corner area. And Andy's coming down the floor with a full head of steam. And I'm like, okay, like we just need a bucket or we get foul, we get free throws. So all this in my mind. But the only thing I'm thinking about is, dude, I'm going to hit the game winning shot. Like this is how it's going to go. Like I, like it's a moment you dream about, you know oh, what I mean? And so, crap. and, uh, and I promise this isn't going where you guys think it's going. <laughs> uh, it's much worse. Oh, you know? no. and, so, oh, crap. and uh, so anyways, so just like I dreamed about, you know, and he's bringing the ball up. He's bringing it to the left side. I'm standing there maybe 8, 12 feet away from him. And, I, and my dude goes to double. You know, he's the best player on the floor, you know. So my defender goes to double. And so I yell out, Andy, Andy. You know, again, like my life flashing before my eyes. About to get this catch. About to get this bucket. We're going to move on. I'm be oh, a hero, no. you know. And uh, instead, he looks up at me dribbles the ball off his foot and the ball goes out of bounds at the buzzer i don't even get a chance to take a shot you know i mean that's how that's how it all ended you know which is like super heartbreaking you know like more so than like i don't i don't know if it would have been lower than than me taking a shot and missing like obviously that would have weighed a lot on me but to not even get the chance man was like it was you know what i mean it it was it was so heart-wrenching that that's the way it goes down that is tough you know and 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 so it's over. It doesn't feel real. You know what I mean? It doesn't feel like, like everything you had done, like, I mean, all the reps I took on a shooting machine, like, you know, I was, I was one of the top shooters in Shelby County that year, you know? And, and so like, I don't know, like, it was just like everything in my life felt like it was building to that moment. And then in a second, I tell, I tell our seniors every year since then, like the difference between being a player and an alumni is one buzzer. That's yeah. it. That's all you get. You get that one buzzer and then it switches. You're mm-hmm. done. Right. And I was not in a good place then after that, you know. And it was like a Tuesday night game, which was the worst. I got to go to school tomorrow. You know, I'm like, I'm crying at my dinner table, still doing homework for tomorrow. You know what I mean? Like, it was it was rough. But, yeah, so so to have it end like that, because we were looking so far ahead, you know. And then, and then the next year, like I said, uh, the whole town gets together and they get these T-shirts that everybody wore to every game that said, just one game at a time, we got your back, you know. And so, like, it was a cool kind of, like, mantra to get behind, but it also felt like a slap in the face, too, you know, like, because let's not ahead. look ahead. Like, let's just take one game at a time, you know. And so, so you know, I mean, it is what it is. Like, it definitely wasn't, wasn't a fun feeling. But I think had that not been the case, I don't know where my life would have gone because I poured so much of my life into basketball from that moment on because if I felt like, you know, I had failed in some capacity, you know what I mean? Like, and so – like I, I took a lot of pride. My dad wasn't a wasn't a basketball player when he was in school, but I know that he took a lot of pride. And both my parents and and, and my grandparents, my family took a lot of pride in, in the fact that I was you know a starting player on a Jackson Center team. You know, like they loved they loved wearing Bode Miller on the shirt. They loved wearing you know I was number twenty four. So my parents got twenty fours on all their stuff. You know what I mean? And so uh, I know they took a lot of pride in that. And so it just it just stunk to not give them that moment too of like, man, this could have been a cool thing for all of us collectively to experience. And so then, you know, like that, that like pit that you got, and, and you guys feel it too at different, at different levels when anything's taken away in your life, you know? And so that pit you feel is like, okay, how do I fill this thing in? Because mine, mine felt bottomless yeah. for a long time, you know? It was like, okay, like, what do I do? So I, I remember my freshman year of college, dude, I played basketball like three hours a day just because I had time and I was like, okay, when I go back home, like I'm going to be so much better, you know, like this isn't. And so, so it, it, I don't know. It just, it kind of unleashed this, this chain of events that, 
that who knows where I would have been otherwise. Right. But yeah, so then I don't know if, if we're going to talk about this down the stretch, but you go back to like our game this year with, with Versailles, <laughs> you know, like, and, and I said it all year um, to our guys, like, fellas, like I've been a part of one underperforming team. I don't want to be a part of another one. You know, I've lived that part of my life once. Let's not do it again. Yeah. But, you know, you can't help the trends. You know what I mean? Like it's hard prepping when when on paper you're so much better mm-hmm. you know than than what your opponent is listening to you tell your story about you know why it all started or why you feel the way that you do yeah. i remember um recording that very last um locker room scenario right yeah. uh where you said something along the lines of like um I understand how you feel probably more than you think. Yeah. So now kind of putting everything together yeah, is just dude. like, it breaks my heart. Too. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not trying to make you cry on the show, or you know what I mean? But yeah, it is. I mean, and truthfully, like, it's kind of like when you're in high school. And, you know, I teach high school kids still today, but it's like when you're a senior in high school. I don't know. I don't know how you guys, how you guys' families were. Man, my dad told me every day it felt like, like, hey, your senior year goes by quick. Don't forget, it. live every moment. You know what I mean? And like, the more I heard that, the less I believed it. You know what I mean? Like, truthfully, like, okay, we get it. Like, it goes <laughs> fast. You know what I mean? But then, but then, truthfully, too, you get to graduation day, and it's like, holy smokes, like. Yeah, this is it. Like this last, I remember my dad saying this this too when we were in the, when when we had our graduation ceremony at Jackson Center. He was like, "Taking the moment because this is the last time that group of people will be in the room together," you know. And so that was like a really cool like thought and a real cool piece of wisdom that I try to share with my with my students now. You know, like this is it. Like you don't know where everybody's gonna be. You know, one year from now, two, five, ten, twenty, whatever it is. And but but that same level of of um, finite time is is hard for students and athletes, mm-hmm, you know. Yeah. And, and so that was the hardest. That was probably one of the biggest struggles this year with with our Indian Lake team. We had was trying to get them to realize, like, fella, and, and Irv, you probably got me saying it more than anybody. Like, fellas, we can be bad. Like, we can be bad. <laughs> like, we can play bad basketball. You know, like we're a really good team, but we can be bad. Yeah. And if we're bad at the wrong time, like we're not gonna do what you guys want to do. You know, because. It all it all goes into like the way you prepare, the way that you come in, the mentality you have. If you just disregard that opponent and you don't give them the respect, I know that sounds cliche, but if you don't respect them, man, like I've been, like when I was the Riverside coach, like we beat some good teams because they overlooked us. You know what I yeah. mean? And so it was weird coaching the lake this year and being on the other side of that. Like, okay, now I got to switch gears. Like we're not the underdogs anymore. Now people are coming for us. And it was hard to get kids to buy into that of like, but again, you know, if you think like, like, you know, any leg back to back conference championships, that's never happened in their school history, yeah. you know? And so like the situation, these senior boys were in at Indian Lake this year is almost identical to the situation I was in when, as a senior, except for the fact that like my senior year, a majority of the group was returning that next year, which is, you know, how they made it to state and all that right. stuff. Like, any late, you know, next year we, we lose a huge portion of, of what we had this year. So it's similar, different. But, yeah, I mean, I, I don't, you know, I for sure remember that locker room, at, you know, at Vandalia and, and after that Versailles game. And I remember saying that. Uh, and, yeah, you know, it still stings a little bit. And I think I even told him, like, felt like it's just basketball, guys. Like, it's just a game, yeah. you know. Like, if you love something, like – like it's gonna hurt and it's okay to hurt and the, but that pain goes away and i think i even told him like for me it was like seven years like after like <laughs> seven, you know, something hopeful something real cheery to leave him off with like yeah you know give it like five seven twenty years <laughs> and, and yeah you know, so, whatever it, but you have to you, like i said man you have to fill that hole with something you know and and uh yeah so thankfully you know my life's perspective is a lot different now you know like i'm, I'm married have two daughters and uh and you know i'm a lot stronger in my faith than i was then and so it's it's cool to have that that feeling still like i still get it at times you know which mm-hmm. is why i did not make a very good junior high coach because <laughs> i still have that like intensity like itch that needs scratched right and right. uh and yeah but it is, it is a different perspective now yeah. listen so, sorry listening to you talk about um pushing you know this is it enjoy this moment it was really cool to Look back and um, watch that clip of Caden Nickel talking about talking to the younger guys at the very end of the season in the locker room, like, "Hey, enjoy this moment because yeah. this is it." Um, and you know, 
watching those guys kind of show different everyone kind of had a different reaction to yeah. it but just kind of the ones you could see you know it was a little bit different for some people yeah um but you know since we're kind of already on that topic i wanted to talk about uh because i thought avery's um his speech to the to the yeah. other guys yeah. was really really good too yeah um just talking about how hey this is very very crucial and i could just see how how real it was and how much it meant yeah. to him so i'm just really really excited to see where brody and him what, what they do next year yeah i mean it'll it'll be a whole different animal next year you know what i mean like like you can't you can't graduate almost three thousand career points and it's <laughs> yeah. still like in two guys and still think well yeah let's just run it back again you know what i mean and so It'll be a lot different. Like, fortunately, again, uh, very blessed with the with the. Work. Well, first of all, like, have to give all the credit to, to Zach Overtrip. You know what I mean? Coach yeah. O over at the lake has done an incredible job. Like, I just feel like I've just hopped in while we were close to the finish yeah. line. You know what I mean? So, like, I I I, don't, I can't take a whole lot of credit and a whole lot of responsibility for it. But uh, yeah, very blessed to have to have some some good class. Our freshman and sophomore classes this year that'll be sophomores and juniors next year still have a lot of talent um so i think next season will be very similar to what we were last year last year we were about a 500 team okay. um we had we still had cam and Caden. obviously they were both juniors last year and next year we'll have avery and brody as a junior and sophomore but uh one thing to, that we tried to make clear or at least i tried to make clear personally to to brody risinger you know this this kid who's going to have an incredible career you know if he if he stays healthy and keeps doing things the right way um was that dude this is like like, this is a very unusual experience for a kid of your caliber because you're getting like the third best defender every night. You know what I mean? Like, because as great as you are, like, I mean, the dude, the dude got like 20 and 20 in junior high, you know, like 20 points, 20 rebounds. It was just a monster, but he's a full grown adult yeah. at 13, yeah. you oh, yeah. know, and playing against children. So like, it's, it's easier for him. And so you could see that kind of frustration this year. Like we needed... You know, and that was that was a lot of my conversations with Brody because because Coach O is also an intense, passionate guy, and so yeah. and so with Brody being a freshman, it was like, dude, I understand you're a freshman, but we need like junior level Brody right now because this is our chance to do it. Yeah. You know, like this is like we're never gonna have all these pieces in the room again, and so I understand that you're still learning as we go, but like we need you to be whatever you're going to be as a junior right now because if we want to be successful, like you have to be successful, mm -hmm. and and so. By allowing him, well, not, I mean, not allowing him necessarily, but since he got the third best defender, you know, it was, it was like, I mean, it was rainbows and butterflies for that kid, you know what I mean? Because right. you're not going to let, you're not going to put that kid on Caden Nickel or Camden Tuttle, you'll, they'll get, they'll score 50, you know? <laughs> yeah. And so now my conversation with Brody now is like, okay, next year, like, I hope you, like, in our exit interview we'd had with him, I made it very clear, like, I hope you had fun this year, dude, because you're not, <laughs> like, next year, it's you, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like they, like, defenses will be focused on you, and so, as, as great as you thought, or as hard as you thought this year was as a freshman, trying to learn as you go, and, and all this stuff, like, next year, man, it's going to be cranked up, because, I mean, we just won't have the supporting cast. Now, in two years, you know, like, once everybody gets that varsity experience back, like, I think we'll, we'll make another little run at it. But next year is going to be a lot of growing pains, a lot of dudes that have not played a whole lot of high school basketball that are going to get a lot of significant minutes. Um, and, and the jump, I, I, obviously Jack said doesn't have football, so I never played football. But the jump from JV to varsity, I'm assuming in football, is very similar. to it's, all, it's almost a whole new game. You know, like the pace is so much quicker. The dudes are so much bigger. They jump higher. You know what I mean? And so you have less time to think which means that your instincts better be really good because if they're not, you're going to look silly. You oh, know? yeah. <clears throat> I, I think back on, like, JV basketball and football, both, like, the pace is double time, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, it, it probably will be difficult. And I uh, I wanted to rewind a sure, little yeah. bit because when you said something about, like, this is it, like, talking about, you know, um, when you had that locker room speech mm. and talking about not to, not to I mean, it's going to hurt for years. Yeah. Uh, it just really took me back to that time in my life when you know, I thought football was done for me. Yeah. I, I uh, my senior night, my last football game of my career, I did. I th I thought it was done. I thought it was done, done. I didn't think there was anything of it. And for months, like I wasn't gonna go play football. That wasn't my. That wasn't my intent to go mm. to a college play football. I had my um, my exception letter from UC, and I was gonna go down there and get my uh, PTA and mm. write it out, right? Yeah. And 
for months, man, it was just in the back of my head. I'm like, this can't be it. This can't be it. This can't be it. And I just had a bit like losing going two and eight my senior year of football. Like it just left a really bad taste in my mouth. So I was like, you know what? I'm doing it. So I left. I mean, I left and I went. I completely changed my game plan, went on college visits for football, and then that's why I went to Heidelberg. And like you said, like that stuff sticks, man. Mm. And that's the reason why I, I, I didn't, I, I couldn't let it, you know yeah. what I mean? And I knew it would have for years if I, if I would have let yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's funny you say that, you know, like there were, there were two different moments in my life when I thought like my, my basketball like association was done. And so yeah. one, like you said, was that last game. You know, it just, I mean, it hits you like a, a tsunami, man. It's just it like, does. it's so, like you just get taken to such a dark place so quickly. Mm -hmm. And if you're not grounded or if you don't have a support system to help you get out of that, like you'll just stay there, mm -hmm. you know, like you truthfully will. And uh, so then I, I talked a little about when I was in college, then, you know, I, I, for no reason, right? I, I'm no longer playing in front of crowds of people. I'm no longer <laughs> doing anything. But like, I just still have that drive. Like, okay, like how good can I get? You know, like how, how far can I take this thing? Yeah. And so I would just play all the time. And then my my senior year of college, I was just playing in a pickup game and just went up, grabbed a rebound, came down, felt a little like like in my in my leg. But I never thankfully never had any injuries in my life before. Yeah. You know, nothing nothing too severe. And so I kept playing. I probably played for another hour. Went back to my room, like back to my dorm, and uh, I played ping pong for like two hours with like <laughs> with a buddy and, and stuff. And then the next morning, just woke up, my leg was just throbbing, and I had no clue what was going on. And so I I didn't know what to do. So like a dumb kid, you know, I was like, I probably just need to work it out. Like let me go to the gym. I got on like an exercise bike for thirty minutes. Like, it just oh, needs to loosen up, you know. Like I just gotta get it loose. It's not getting loose, and so. Anyway, so I ride a bike for like 30 minutes and it's just way worse now. You know, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts so much worse now. And so I go back, like barely walking. I go back to my, my building and uh, my wife, she's my girlfriend at the time, but I go to my wife and I'm just like, hey, like I, something doesn't feel right. Like, I don't know what's going on. Like, I think I'm going to go to the doctor. And I have like this med student working out my leg and stuff. And she's doing all the tests, you know, where they like are testing all the ligaments in the knee. And she just like cranks it to the oh, side. Oh my goodness. And I just like, God, like just yelled. And I was like, whatever that test was, that's the one. Like that thing hurt like crazy. She's like, okay, I think you tore your meniscus. And I was just like, I don't even know what that means. So like, you know, <laughs> I, don't even, I don't even know what that is. So I, I, like I told you guys, you know, off camera, like I, I consider myself to be a, a very good student, you know, still. And so I go home, I look up all this stuff, like, what does that mean, you know? And I was just like, dude, I might not be able to play again unless I have, like, surgery. And I'm not a big surgery type guy. Yeah. So, I, so, like, those two moments both of, like, this can't be how it ends. You know, yeah. like, kind of like what you were saying. Like, this can't be, this mm. can't be how this goes. Like, yeah. I could not have just put in, like, the last three years playing against all these dudes from, like, big city schools. Like, you know, like, yeah. play, just playing a ton of games for it to now all just be like, nope, you're done. Like, we don't need that anymore. And, uh, and so thankfully, like it, you know, we were able to get all worked out and stuff with, with not too many hiccups, but even still today, like, you know, I still like, I still like hooping. So I go like, I'll randomly just wake up early on a Saturday and just go into the gym and, and get the shoe machine out for like two hours and just, just get up, yeah. get up a bunch of shots because I also talk a lot, you know what yeah. I mean? And so like now that I'm, <laughs> now that I'm out of coaching, you know, like I'm, a, I'm still at Riverside. And so I have a lot of those kids in class and stuff that play yeah. and, and, and I'll show up at their open gyms, you know, still and just hoop a little bit. But, you know, I, I still, I like to keep it polished a little bit, you know, so that if, if it ever does come out, like, okay, we can go play once right now, you know, yeah. if you want to. Uh, so yeah, so it, it is, I, I feel again, just very blessed that, that it didn't end and that I'm still able to interact with the game in a variety of ways now, you know? Yeah. I don't know if it really ever does end because for example, like, you know, you're done with football you're still trying to, you know, train other people to get better at football. And I and we're doing this together, you know, I'm always working out, just missing the old weightlifting days or just kind of mm -hmm. shooting around whenever I can. So just kind of like, I don't know, we just love sports. Yeah, I don't know if it ends, but it definitely is different. You know what I mean? Like, like as great as it felt cutting down the nets these last two years winning, yeah. winning CBC championships, I just can't help think, like, dude, what if I did this in high school? You know, like, you know, it's just – 
like there's just part of that like even like i talk about trying to fill in that pit man like it's it's hard and like some of the stuff you throw in there it doesn't doesn't do enough right. you know so i don't know if it does and and like i told you guys too you know uh i was fortunate to have an experience this year where i could call a game on you know on the radio and stuff and like i just love interacting with the game you know and so it doesn't matter what it is but like i know my wife gives me hard so like i said we have we have two daughters man and so my wife and, and a couple of our friends like to joke that, you know, eventually I'm going to be a girls basketball coach because I'm not going to be able to just sit around and let somebody else do it and me <laughs> not have input. And as much as I'd like to think that I'll be more hands off, like I also know who I am. Yeah. Right? You know? yeah. so, so we'll see how that pathway goes, but who knows where it's going to end. So I like you're talking about this stuff and it's just making me kind of like laugh a little bit silently because you know, my little brother went out to play football. He quit playing football, and that erated me, right? Mm. I, I, like, he came, he's like, I'm not playing football. I don't like it. I was like, are you freaking kidding me? You're 6'5". Yeah. Like, what's, what are you doing? Yeah, like, how could you not? What else are you going to do? What are you going to do? <laughs> yeah. Like, you sit play, play the trumpet? Games? Yeah. <laughs> You're the tallest trumpet player ever. You know? so, so I'm sitting there, and I'm just erated. I'm in our little weight room or whatever, and he, he goes, what's, what's wrong with you? I was like, just get out of my face. <laughs> and so I still went, I still went to football games. Like yeah. I went to football games with Dave and, um, Kelly's brothers all the time. And, uh, dude, I would sit there and I'd watch these games and when something would go wrong, I would be like, I would be irate. Right. I would just be so upset mm -hmm. because I'm like, I could be out there right now doing this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not joking either, man. Like that first year out of high school that I went back and watched, you know, like, so like I said, the team was still very good. Yeah. yeah. Like I, we always, I would always sit close to the front and I'm yelling the whole game, you know, like not like cheering, you know, like what a normal person, <laughs> like I'm like yeah, yell, yeah. yelling at dudes, like, what are you doing? Like you're supposed to be on the back side. Like I'm like yelling stuff yeah. like I'm, you know, some pseudo coach from the bench, but it's just like, again, like that, that animal doesn't like die easily, you know, like it's still. And, and so now, thankfully, you know, I'm a little older, a little bit, a little bit, probably more tired. Mm. Uh, <laughs> now it's pretty easy for me to just go to a game and just enjoy the game. Right. You know, like yeah. I, I, and I've gone to enough basketball games, big or small, you know, that I can just sit and just like have fun, just watch it. Like, I don't want to talk to people, yeah. you know, like I'm not that part. Like I, I, I don't necessarily, you know, want a bunch of people to like chit chat with me. Like, what are your thoughts on, like, I just like to watch the game and just enjoy it because even it like good or bad, like there's still things that you can take away from from it you know and so so yeah it's it's cool. silently judge you know just yeah <laughs> sometimes not silently you know <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah i do just want to go back and just kind of yeah. get back track on sure. uh to your story yeah um i want you to talk about how you got that uh coaching job and teaching job at riverside mm -hmm. and what eventually led you to the lake right now yeah so um man okay so when i was in college my senior year we uh at Bowling Green, they had this big teaching fair. And so they brought in some, I think it was 250 high schools uh, into this one big building at Bowling Green. And uh, they each had a table set up and you had, you could sign up and it was just job interviews mm -hmm. all day. You know, Bowling Green had, I don't know what it is now because I don't care now that I'm out of school, but yeah. at the time they were the number one teaching school in, in the state of Ohio. Okay. You know, so it was a big deal. Like if you were going to education to go to Bowling Green. And uh, so we go to this, my wife and I go to this teaching fair and uh, I think I had 12 interviews set up, you know, and, and you could go early. Some of them you couldn't schedule online. You had to go there day of and sign up and stuff. And it's funny. Um, and I hope I don't get too much flack for it, but you know, Riverside was not on my list of yeah. schools to talk to. Yeah. You know, I went through, uh, you know, cause again, I am the person that I am. I'm very OCD, very like preparation is key kind of guy. Yeah. So I went through the whole list of 250. And I looked up like three parameters that were important to me. I said, number one, I don't want to be an hour away from home. You know, so I looked at, I narrowed my list of schools within an hour. Yeah. Number two, uh, I would like to make at least $30,000 a year. Yeah. You know, so yeah. I, like that at that time, that was a good starting salary. Uh -huh. And then number three, like I would like for the school to have like a C or better, like report cards rating um, from the state of, from ODE. Uh, and Riverside only checked like one of those, like the distance box yeah. was pretty much it, you know? And so, uh, so I'd seen that they were on there and, uh, so anyway, so I go through and, and, you know, Dr. Mann and, yeah. and stuff. And so Scott Mann, who is the superintendent at, at Riverside mm -hmm. is a Jackson center guy. And so, uh, he actually was the baseball coach at Jackson center when I was in elementary school and I was one of the oh, bad okay. boys 
for mm -hmm. for a couple of years and stuff. So I knew him since I was just a little fella. I had no idea. Yeah, and so uh, anyway, and he's got this big personality. You know what I mean? So I as soon as we turn and walk up the aisle that Riverside is in, you know, he's like, hey, brother. You know how he always is, you know? Like, and so uh, so anyway, so he invites me over. He's like, well, what are you licensed in and all this stuff? And I was like, high school math. And he's like, oh, we need one of those next year. And I was just like, oh, <laughs> okay yeah uh okay and he's like what do you got any times available and i was like i mean i like i literally, i'm not joking i had 12 interviews like 12 40 minute interviews yeah. signed up for already and i was like i have like an hour at like one o'clock that i was gonna take lunch you know yeah. and, and he's like perfect just put us down you know like we'll talk quick we're trying to be out of here by two anyways <laughs> and i was like okay you know like one of those kind of deals like okay yeah sure so anyway, so I, uh, you know, I sign up, I go through some good interviews, <laughs> some bad ones, you know, like, like, uh, like I said, there's a lot of people there, you know, yeah. and stuff. And so I'm just exhausted after about six. And, uh, so I get to the point where I'm just like dogging through these interviews, like, yep. Yeah, okay. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. Hi. Yep. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. whatever. And, and so anyway, so I get to, um, I get to my Riverside one and, um, I didn't get to even interview with, with Dr. Mann. I interviewed with Mrs. Kaufman, who's the high school principal. And um, I was like, hi, I'm Seth. And she's like, I'm Kelly. You know, we sit down. And she's like, I know I know, Scott Mann knows you really well. I don't know you at all. So let's get to know each other. Okay. You know, and it was just very relaxed. Like, it was like some, some of the interviews I had, like, I remember... I don't want to say the school, but I remember a school district that, like, opened a binder right when I sat down and said, my name is blank... I, or I am here for blank schools. This interview will not be a conversation. I am going to read you a question and record your answers. Wow. Question number one. You know, and what? it was like this, I was sitting in front of like not a kiosk. At not at all. You know no. what I mean? I was like, dude, I just talked to six people and you're going to make me sit to a robot now. Like it was crazy craziness. And so anyway, so I sit down with, with Mrs. Kaufman where, you know, it feels very familiar. Like we knew each other for a long, like, it, I don't know. It just felt, felt good. Yeah. And Dr. Man was interviewing somebody else right next to her. And so when he got done with that interview, he kind of joined our table. And so now all three of us are just chit chatting. It was just super, yeah. super relaxed, you know? So anyway, so I go, I, I get up to leave, feel like the interview went well. I feel like I said, some, of them, I feel like some of them went well. And, um, I go to leave, and as I'm with my friends, like, getting my get my coat on, you know, doing all this stuff, somebody taps me on the shoulder, and I turn around, it's Dr. Man, and uh, I was like, hey, you know, I call, like, people from Jackson, I call him Scooter, so I was like, hey, Scooter, what's wrong? And uh, he's like, why don't you come talk to me for a second? And I was like, dude, I just talked to you for an hour, <laughs> like, yeah. I'm trying to get out of here, dude, I canceled all my, like, interviews after that one, because I was like, yeah. I don't want any part of it, you know? And uh, anyways, so uh, he said, hey, you know, like what would you say if we offered you the job right now? And as a dumb kid, I was like, can I call my parents? You know, like I had no, like I wasn't ready to be an adult yet. Like, yeah. No, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. Like, can I, I would like to, can, can I call my mom? Like, <laughs> mom, dad, what do you guys, you know, one of those things. And, uh, so anyway, so he's like, let me know. That was a Thursday night that that event was. And he's like, let me know by Sunday. And so I was like, okay. So I sprinted back to my room, like called my mom and dad, like, you know, hey, like I, they're like, how'd your interviews go? I was mm -hmm. like, well, I had like three really good ones, like, uh, but I got offered a job, you know, I don't know what to do. And, I, and so the fact that it was Riverside close to home, my mom and dad were all for it. Right. And my dad is very practical, you know? So yeah. he's like, a job is better than a job offer, you know? <laughs> and so, uh, so anyway, so I got in and uh, as soon as I got hired, I met with um, the athletic director and mm -hmm. um, they said, you know, do you have any interest in coaching any sports? And I was like, the only thing I, I know about is about, I mean, I played baseball in high school, but okay. it wasn't a, it wasn't a big deal. Yeah. Compared, like a lot of us basketball players would just play baseball just to get out of the gym for two months, just to get a break. And then we were right back in it. And uh, so I was like, yeah, I mean, I, I would love to coach basketball if that's, yeah. if that's available. And uh, they said, well, like, why don't we introduce you to the head coach and we'll see if it's a fit. And so I met Dean Sanford at the time was oh, the okay. head coach. Yeah. Um, so I met with him and he was a big personality, you know, like he's a very friendly, like easygoing oh, yeah. kind of guy. And uh, so it worked. And so he's like, I want you to be my JV coach and stuff. And so that first year I was just the JV coach. Um, 
that was Irv's freshman year, mm-hmm. and uh, and I think we went thirteen and nine, uh, like the JV team did. The varsity team maybe won eight games or something. Yeah. Um, and so that was cool. And the original plan was, you know, Dean wanted to coach. He had he had coached the year prior, so this was his second year, and he was also a girls' coach at Riverside in the past, like previous yeah. to that. Uh, but his plan was like he just wants to coach for three years and then I can take over. He's like, why don't you be the JV coach for three years and you can take over? And I was like, perfect. You know, that'll give me enough time to learn, do this, this, and this. Well, then about January rolls around. And like I said, I'm 22 years old, you know, and, and he just looks at me on the bus right home. We just had a, a bad loss. You know, I can't remember. It was a game that we were, you know, probably supposed to win, but we mm-hmm. didn't. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, he's looking at me. He's like, did you hear what so-and-so's parents were saying and all this stuff? And and I'm like, truthfully, I block everything out. You know, like yeah. I like when when we're playing, when it's live, like I hear nothing because I'm so locked in. And so I just looked at him like, no, like you hear people like I don't hear <laughs> I don't hear anybody. Right. Like, you know, I hear nothing. And he's like, yeah, man, I don't think I can do like I don't think I'm going to do this. Like, I think I think this is going to be it for me. And I just like was like, oh, OK. And so, again, like super naive kid. You know, like a year ago, called his mom and dad to see if it was okay to get a job. Like yeah. now they're like, yeah, why don't you do this thing? And so I, uh, so so yeah, so our first year we started out, we were a little rough. Uh, I think we went two and ten that first season, twenty seventeen, um, and then we went five and five. We kind of had a little, you know, we had to, we had to have a little confrontation with with uh, a couple of our key guys in that moment to try to like look i know you guys don't know me super well but like you just gotta believe in me man like i know we'll get this thing going the right way so we finished out five and five uh competed well in our tournament game but but the the early part of the season mm-hmm. you know killed us we got we got matched up with a really good seed and so even if we played well it wasn't gonna make a difference and then that second year um 2018 we uh we only won I think we won eight games that year, so we only improved our record, you know, by one game. But man, we were we were really good defense. We just couldn't score, you know. And mm-hmm. so actually, that's that's still Riverside's all time best defensive team with that twenty eight. We only gave up forty nine and a half points per game. Who were some of the yeah. guys on that? Uh, like Trey Lane would have been a senior that okay. year. Oh. Josh Ritzma, those guys would have been seniors, and then you know uh, Kyle Knight, Lane Willoughby, those guys in your mm-hmm. class would have been in there. And then um, we played John Zumberger as a freshman. He was on that team that year. Right. But um, anyway, so yeah, so we were really good defensively. Um, we had a we had a six ten kid, you know that that wasn't Alonzo. yeah Alonzo. I played at you with him. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Oh, did you really? Yeah, yeah. I had no idea. So we had we had Alonzo Styler who was just uh, a tree under the basket, man, who could just block a lot of shots. He wasn't the most gifted, but the dude was smart. He worked hard. I loved coaching that kid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then uh, and so yeah, so we had we had kind of set the wheels in motion to have a really good year that next year in 2019, Herb senior year. And uh, Alonzo decides he doesn't want to come out that senior year. So we had talked about it for a little bit. And and he's a smart kid. I wasn't going to try to convince him one way or the other. And so I just told him very plainly. I was like, look, I know that you don't make decisions, you know, off a whim. So I'm sure you thought about this. So I'm cool. If you're cool with it, I'm cool with it. But, man, we – so that next year, you know, like I'll never forget the, the first time we played over the summer going into that next year, the first time we played with Alonzo, we gave up so many layups because our whole defense was was structured to pressure the ball because if you get beat alonzo's behind you so he's just gonna <laughs> contest the shots anyways like so we might as well we had to change everything man and so we had to put kyle and i i think i think was really affected by that because he was our smartest player mm-hmm. so we instead of changing everybody else's job to to some new system i was like well let's just change kyle's job and he can do what alonzo was was going to do for us this year yeah. so he had to take the hit so everybody else can kind of be successful so we went i think we went eight and 14 that year but we lost six games by five points or less you oh know and so goodness. like so that would have been that would have been the year like i said you know that was a that was a really good time for us to, to try to win some games and then we graduated. We had nine seniors that season uh, in Irv's class. And so then the next year, uh, we were I, – I truthfully was like, we might win three games. Like, we might we might drop that much. We graduated 80 – I think it was 87% of our scoring and 89% of our rebounding or something like that's gone, like out the door. We only had two guys that ever played in a varsity game before yeah. coming back. Who was it? it was John Darn. Zumber and Wade Offlick was, was, Wade. It was going into his yeah. senior year. And uh, – so I was just like, yeah, dude, we're going to be – like, it's going to be rough. It's yeah. going to be really rough. And somehow we won six. We could have won eight. We actually like we actually blew two games that year that we mm-hmm. probably should have won. But it was kind of crazy how that season worked out. 
And then uh, 2021, my last year was the year after COVID. So um, it was also my uh, my wife and I had our first daughter in 2020. So it was that right at the start of that school year when we uh, when we had our first daughter. And so then coaching that last year, it just got to be it was too much. You know, what I mean, like I told I tell people all the time, like my wife knew who she married. She knew what she signed up for. Like she knew she knew the work that I was going to put into this thing. My daughter did not make those choices, you know, and so I didn't think it was it was fair. Like me pretty mm-hmm. much turning my wife into a single mother for four months out of the year because yeah. I'm doing everything, you know, and so that year was tough. And, uh, and so after that, I just decided with, there were some other things that, that kind of went into it, but after that, I was like, you know, I can't, I can't do this anymore, you know? And so it was, it was too much time and effort. And, and again, you have to, you have to get, you have to be able to find the value, right? Like kind of what we were talking about earlier, you mm-hmm. know? And so if you don't, if you don't see those dividends, like it's tough to, to negotiate doing that again. So I decided I wanted to do junior high. Maybe, maybe I can just pour myself into that and just be like a long time junior high coach, um, you know, where it's just about basketball and just about being with the kids, you know, and maybe that'll work. But, you know, like I said, man, like my first day there, I was like, oh, this is not for me. But, you know, I wasn't going to give up on it. But yeah. it was just like, I mean, like you talk about the difference between a JV and a varsity game. Like mm-hmm. the difference between I was a seventh grade coach. So going from oh. dudes that can play up by the rim to now guys that can barely get to the rim. It was like it was it was way too drastic of a change. And I did enjoy it from the component of like. Uh, just being around kids that just love the game. They're not there for any other reason, you know? And so that was kind of cool. But I felt more like a cheerleader than I did a coach, you know? (laughs) It was very much like, you guys, it's okay. Like, pick yourself up, you know? Do this kind of stuff. Uh, And so, yeah, so then after that, uh, I knew I wanted to get back at the high school level. I thought it would be very weird doing that at Riverside because Mm -hmm. I just... You know, like I said, uh, talked about like before we were we started recording. You know, like having superiors and stuff like yeah. that. Like I thought it'd be weird to to uh, to try to do that after already being in charge. So I said, let me go somewhere where I can uh, learn. You know, and, and and be kind of behind the scenes, just like port, like just show up, practice. You know, game plan, do stuff like that. And so I actually reached out to. Uh, my, my plans were to talk to um, West Liberty's head coach, who I had a relationship with, and Indian Lake's head coach, who I had a relationship with. And West Liberty's coach at the time was contemplating stepping down. And, um, you know, and so I didn't want to be a part of a rebuild necessarily. Yeah. You know, I wanted to go with somewhere where I could learn. So that kind of took that off the table almost immediately. And so I reached out to, to Coach Overturf and I said, you know, like, hey, like, I, I'd love to get back into it. Um, you know, is there, is there room for me on your staff? And at the time he said, no, well, he didn't say no, he's not that guy. He, yeah. you know, he was like, yeah, we'll keep you in mind. And I just never heard from him again. You yeah. know, it was one of those situations. So I just kept bugging him. I was like, Hey, still here. You know, like yeah. if you need any help, like let me know or whatever. And so he, one day was just pretty blunt. He's like, look, man, like we don't have any other paid spots. Like you'd have to be a volunteer. And I was like, Oh, I don't need to get paid. Like, what's the difference? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like, like it's, it's not like we get paid a ton. So it's uh-huh. like, yeah, I'll, I mean, it's, I'm practically volunteering at Riverside right now anyways. You know what I mean? So yeah, like I'll do that. And so, so yeah, coming into there, it was, uh, yeah, it was definitely different, definitely different having, not being the one that gets to make the final decision on stuff. Like it was, it was kind of humbling a little bit, mm-hmm. like kind of had some moments that first year of like, of boundary like setting for myself of like okay, okay like nope this isn't your call like right. you defer to him mm-hmm. and so uh so yeah so it was a little tough but i i enjoy that and i and i tell people i wish i would have not become a head coach so early you know i wish i could have been an assistant to learn more yeah. because all i really had was the experience that i had as a player i didn't play in college to learn from those kind of coaches yeah so i had my high school coach that i kind of deferred to and uh and just the way i thought the game should be played but that was pretty much it. So now that I, even just in two years at Indian Lake, man, like if I if I would become a head coach again, like I would feel much more confident and and just have like a much wider variety of ideas that I've added to like my portfolio, if you will, yeah, of coaching. Absolutely. You know, so we'll kind of see how it goes. But yeah, you talked about um, how you wish you didn't start so early or yeah. or uh, not the head coach so yeah. early, but like. How long do you think or how long do you think it took you to find your groove into being a a coach that you wanted to be? Yeah, I so if you're going to coach at the high school level, Mm -hmm. you have to have a lot of self-assuredness, you know, because every decision you make, there's going to be opposition to it, you Mm -hmm. know. And so I think my first year, 
I had a lot of, um, I was very driven by my own ego that first year of like, well, I'm from Jackson Center, you know, and so pretty much the way I know how to do it is the right way to do it. You know, yeah. it's kind of the thought that I had. So I did not listen very well to anybody's input or advice. And that was a mistake. You know, like I, I wish I would have done things a little differently. Um, and so when those moments came where it was like, why are you doing things this way? You know, where I was questioned as to like, why are you, why aren't you thinking about it like this? And yeah. I was just like, I don't want to hear any of that. You know, like I know what I'm doing. Like, you know, and again, very naive kind of way of thinking. Yeah. And, uh, so I don't know. I would say, I don't know if I'm there yet. Honestly, you know, I've done, I've done high school. I've coached basketball now for nine years. And, uh, I think you have to just be able to adapt, you know? So like you can get into a good rhythm maybe by like, I don't know, two, three years, you can get into a good rhythm, like depending on the kids you have. Right. But I think like, I don't know, like I, I added something I think new every year that I coached, you know, because it would be like, I'd pick this up mm -hmm. and I'd pick that up. And, uh, yeah, so I don't know, I don't know how, how quickly it takes, but, or how quickly it goes, but yeah, you can, you can get into a rhythm now if it's successful, that might be a different story, you know? So, so I think now, like, again, like I'm probably still trying to find that successful formula, that Absolutely. formula for success. Um, because I, I had some version of it at Riverside, but not to what it could have been, you know? Right. So I got a question for yeah. you. Um, how would you say that coaching has developed you as a person? Man, the, uh, again, like you want to talk about an early entrance into adulthood, like you be you become a coach. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's yeah. it's so tough because you're you never understand how those kids look at you or how they view you. Probably until multiple years after they're gone. You know, mm -hmm. and, and I feel very fortunate. I I try to keep touch keep in touch with uh with all my seniors that i've ever played for me from riverside so i okay. have you know i have like this big like this big like journal you know kind of deal where i keep updates try to keep up and i try to reach out to them you know like one or two times a year that's awesome just to see like what they're up to and stuff and that's yeah. kind of the cool part of of you know everybody when you're in when you're in high school like they look for a coach as like a letter recommendation and stuff like that mm -hmm. but it's a lot cooler when you just get to like sit down and just be adults together right. you know that's a pretty mm -hmm. cool feeling and so as a person, you know, like as, as a, as a man, you're trying to develop positive values mm -hmm. in, in kids, you know, like in, in, in kids that, that some of them have had a variety of different experiences and you don't know all those details, mm -hmm. but you just get what you're given and you have to try to move that thing up, you know, and try to advance that thing. And so for me, it was always, it was always challenging to like, find that line of you know especially like when i first got hired i was only 20 i was only f like five years older than mm -hmm. my first senior class yeah you know and i'm supposed to be this authority figure and stuff like that so it it grew me as a person because you have to understand and be empathetic towards people while still having high standards and expectations and that is a super thin line if you don't know how to navigate it and if you don't know how to navigate like the parents of those kids will let you know about it you know what i mean because because those kids are their whole world, you know what I right. mean? And so like they might only have one or two kids in their house that you're in charge of. Well, you have 24 of them in your program, you know? And so you're looking at through different lenses. So just, just finding that balance of how to deal with, with kids that you want to set the right standard for yourself. You know, you want to lead by example. You want to turn out and churn out like these positive male role models, fathers, you know, husbands, whatever it may be. Um, and that's a lot of pressure, you mm -hmm. know, it's a lot of pressure that I think all coaches put on themselves, not just me. When you, when you, you know, talked about being flexible and adaptable, yeah. like when you are approaching a, a, a player, student, et cetera, do you approach each one differently or just with the same? Yeah, for sure. You kind of, you kind of figure out, yeah. especially if you've been around their families, mm -hmm. which was, which was kind of a cool thing like the longer I've done it, like when you, when you know what a kid's about because of how they're raised, um, you know how you can handle them a little differently. And so like you kind of have to establish that rapport, which was the nice thing about being a varsity coach actually, because I would usually have kids as freshmen and sophomores in high school. Well, they weren't usually playing for me yet. So mm -hmm. I would have them in class before I would be their direct coach. You yeah. know, they might, they might be a freshman player, JV player, whatever it may be. But, but like when you're the varsity coach and you have varsity players, yeah, you can't you can't treat everybody the same, you know, mm -hmm. because you you don't know like what 
I always, I always think of it like this. You don't know the conversation in the car when a kid comes to school. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like you don't know yeah. what that looks like. You don't know what their morning look like, etc. And basketball is the same way. You know, like a lot, of, a lot of people use sports as outlets for for all the problems in their life, and so you sometimes get the blunt of that. You know the and so, and uh, and so yeah. So I, I think for sure you can kind of tell who's who, and and you know you'll have your kids that are that can can be talked to yeah. sternly Absolutely. and you'll have your kids that, that you need to kind of nourish a little bit, mm -hmm. a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't look fair to everybody, which is, which is the hard thing too. Like, because I've had players I'll just rip into over nothing, yeah. you know, and then I'll have players that'll do things like pretty, I mean, there's not a lot of extreme stuff to happen in basketball, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I'll, people do things the wrong way and I'll just be like, Hey, okay. Now what do mm -hmm. we talk about? You know, like it's like good cop, bad cop, yeah. Right. but yeah, so it, it is different. Um, and that's something else that's just part of learning and growing yeah. too. Can you share a specific example of a challenging situation that you have faced as a coach so far? Um, I think probably the most challenging was was just my change of roles over okay. these like cuz I mean I've now done it all. You know, like at the right. at least on the boys end, right? So right. going from a JV coach that was super young and mildly successful to becoming a varsity coach who was not as young or successful you know what i mean and then like jumping from there now to low like well, not low like uh just lower grade level so like a seventh yeah. grade and trying to now figure out okay how does how does the game look here yeah and then jumping to back into the varsity level at an even higher extreme because our indian lakes our indian lake teams have been really solid these past two years i think that's been the biggest challenge is just like like, what does my role look like in that? Because when I was the varsity coach at Riverside, my coaching staff changed every year for the first three seasons, you know, because people would do it for a variety of reasons. And they weren't they didn't sign up for the commitment that I signed up for. You know, I wanted to be there forever. And that was my goal. And um, so trying to find ways of like, OK, how can I keep these guys around? Um so that I don't have to keep looking for coaches every year. Okay, well, here's the solution. I'll just do all the work, you know, and that was a tough, like, solution to yeah. have face, you know. So, like, when we – like, I mean, still, I think about, like, the last two seasons specifically, 20 and 21, um, I did all 23 scouting reports for that whole season, you know. And so – and and Irv knows a little about it because he, he saw some of our work this year at the lake, but – Man, it's hours of, of film mm -hmm. study. And, like, I kind of envy football coaches in that way because they only have to prep once a week. And I know that's still a lot of prep because there's a lot more facets in football. Like, I get that. Mm -hmm. But, like, man, having to, having to watch four films for your game Tuesday and then Friday and then Saturday when it's just you – like, it was, oh, my gosh, it was a nightmare. Like, I remember coming home from a Friday night game, getting off the bus at, like, 10, getting to my house, 10, 30, 11, maybe, and then having to watch film because I didn't have the sky report done for Saturday mm -hmm. yet. So I'm staying up till, like, 2, 3 o'clock, waking up at 6 so I could get all typed and then turn it over to my team Saturday morning. So, yeah, it, it was just tough, like, finding my role in all that and being able to go from one to the other as just, like – that's the basketball guy you know what i mean yeah. and so like okay here here basketball guy go do this so so as a you know as a teacher and a coach what is what are some things that you try to teach your athletes or students um just about life yeah yeah you know i i'm a big believer in the, the way you do anything is the way you do everything you know and so Coach Elker instilled in all of us, you know, even it's funny talking to like players that I've recently graduated from Jackson Center, like he always talked about the three P's, which are pride, purpose, and passion. And at the end of every game plan were those three P's. Mm -hmm. And so like pride, you know, satisfaction, job well done, purpose, a sense of direction, and passion, a strong liking or enthusiasm. If you do those three things in whatever you're pursuing, you will be successful. And kids nowadays, like my struggle is like, they call that being a try hard, you know what I mean? And that's like the most frustrating yes. thing for like a kid to come back at you with that. Like, why do you like, why do you care so much? Right. And it's like, that's, that's a very tough, like that is like the one hill I will die on is like, okay, because it's easy not to care. You know, yeah. it truthfully is like, if I don't care about something, then if I fail at it, well, I didn't care about it anyways. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Like I have a built in excuse already. And that is such a bothersome mm -hmm. idea. And so like, that's one of my big things is like, it doesn't matter. Like if I'm sweeping the gym floor before my own workout, I still do it just as diligently. I don't cut corners. Like, you yeah. know, whatever. And if it's, even if it's just me, like, let alone 
my whole team coming into practice or like we're about to play a game mm -hmm. you know and so that is that's like my biggest thing is like dude like it does not matter like if this is you know a scrap piece of paper and you're just writing your name on it it should still look good you know mm -hmm. like and so and i don't know like i just think and again like my students will say that's because i'm ocd my wife will say it's because i'm ocd whatever <laughs> that means but but yeah you know i don't know like i just think details are so important and like there's lessons that you can learn regardless of outcome you yeah. know and so if you don't if you don't put forth that effort the lesson you're gonna get is not gonna be a good one either mm -hmm. So. I wanted to take time to kind of give you your flowers and a coach O as well. There's two topics that I wanted to talk about. Yeah. Um, the first one being um, there was multiple times during the season where I remember Coach O giving you that um, that respect and that and that credit of like, hey, give Coach uh, Buttermiller a round of applause for the for this <laughs> game plan, or you know, tell Coach uh, Buttermiller a good job on the game plan. Yeah. So I thought that was really cool that he gave you that. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing would be, um, you know, when Coach O broke that school record of the of the most wins yeah. right um i was talking to some of the players and they were like oh we didn't even know that this was happening <laughs> and then obviously yeah. and then uh, hearing coach o talk about it he was like oh I, like what's going on yeah so i want to talk about how you had that planned out and like why did you think that was important uh to happen yeah so i don't know if planned out is the best way to phrase it. Okay. you know like um yeah so i mean your first point like obviously i appreciate coach o a ton and like he doesn't have to give me credit for anything mm -hmm. you know like i said i love i love what i do and it and having to prep six scouting reports a year is a lot more family friendly than 23 right yeah. and so like those chances i did get to do a scouting report i would just think to myself like well we're not losing on my watch you know like i'm gonna try to do everything i can and and fortunately like i joke about with my wife like i was undefeated this year with my scouting reports you know? <laughs> like obviously we had a really good team so they get all right. the credit for that yeah. but but uh yeah so i appreciate that a lot about coach o and and yeah i don't even remember what it was i think it was after we played graham the first time uh we held him to 24 points i think in the in the final score and so it was early december maybe and um coach o had made a comment that uh that might be a school record for least points allowed okay and I so remember. and so after the game he checks because coach o is a stats guy so he has all his stuff saved and uh so he checks he's like oh no it's like second or something mm -hmm. like that and um so then after that game i just was like i wonder what the record is like that like 24 is not a lot of points you know yeah. like, i feel like that's pretty solid yeah so i get on online coach has this whole like website dedicated to the team with all the stats for everything wow. you know he put a lot of time and effort into it and uh so yeah so i go on and i'm just like messing around looking at the different records and, and things like that and i see coaching records and coach up uh, yeah grandma's it must be our, must be our second game of the year actually because so then coach O. uh he came into the season like four record, four wins shy of whoever was ahead of him, mm -hmm. and I'm like, well, we're about to break this thing, you know what I mean? Like we're mm -hmm. like number one, we're gonna be really good, and it's only I can't remember if it was four or five, whatever it was, but uh, so I saw that and I was like, oh, we gotta do something, like we have to do something, but I didn't want him to be a part of it. Right. Number one, I thought he truthfully knew about it, like okay. I, you know, because Coach O, like as much as he is a stats guy, like he's not, he always calls himself a truth teller. I don't believe in unless not like. If numbers are involved specifically, he is not a truth teller when it comes to numbers because he makes up stats like crazy, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? And so it's it's just funny, but so I assumed that he knew about it, right? And so I was like, I'm gonna go kind of like around behind his back a little bit and just see what we got here. So I texted the other three coaches and I was like, Hey, do you guys know that Coach O only needs like two more wins to break the school's all time mm -hmm. scoring record, or wins record or something like that? And uh, one of the coaches was super skeptical, like, well, where'd you get this information from? You know, so, like, so I just, like, sent the thing to him. So we were all in agreement of it. Right. Well, Coach O's everywhere, you know, when, when, when I'm at the school, right? Like, I don't yeah. teach at the lake. So it's hard for me to navigate with people at the lake since I'm not a part of the building. Because my only time I'm at the school, I'm usually three feet from Coach O. And so right. it was, like, trying to plan this thing. And it just kind of worked out, you know. Like, the athletic director just happened to walk in the gym. And uh, Coach O was running a station, and I wasn't. And so I was just like, hey, like, Mr. Quarter, can I talk to you real quick? And, you know, I was like, hey, so this is this, this, this. You know, I kind of talked to him about it. I was right. like, do you guys have, like, what's the, like, what's the, you know. Number. Yeah. yeah. Like, well, I was just like, what do you guys do for this kind of stuff? Okay. Like, what's happened in the past? 
And he's like, oh, we don't have any precedent for it. So, like, let's do it big. You know, like, let's make yeah. it a thing. And I said, okay, well, as long as we win this game and this game, it should be, I think it was Anna, like the home game it against was, Anna, yeah. maybe. I was like, we should break it at home against Anna mm-hmm. uh, as long as we play well and do all this stuff. And he's like, oh, yeah, I'll have something written up and, and all that stuff. So then, like, Anna, you know, they beat us last year mm-hmm. by 20 in the regular season. Then we beat them by, like, three in the tournament. So yeah. we knew it was going to be a tough game. And, and we played them over the summer, and I think we won by six, you know, at a, at a tournament over the summer. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I don't know how this game is going to go down. And uh, – so finally, when we got to like the fourth quarter, I think it had been maybe an eight point game pretty much the whole way. Yeah. And so still like, I'm like, come on, like, let's just do it. Let's just get this thing over with, you know? And uh, so in like with two minutes left, we're up by, I think we we're up by 12 or 14. And I started telling the guys on the bench, like, hey, like, just so you guys know, this is this is going to be a record breaker for Coach O. And so we're going to celebrate. We're going to stay on the floor and do all this stuff afterwards. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, yeah, so it was kind of a cool moment. He, he had no clue. You know, he had no yeah. clue. And, and so then we go through the handshake line. We give him – we make kind of the announcement and stuff. And, uh, and then all the boys tattled on me afterwards. They were like <laughs> – yeah, yeah. that Coach, I was like, how'd you guys all know about it? And they're like, oh, we heard Coach Bullmiller talking <laughs> yeah. about all this stuff. So I wasn't really looking for recognition in that. I just thought, like, right. if it was something I would have done, you know, like you don't do it for those reasons. But it's still cool to have those moments exactly. for sure. Yeah. Before we're almost out of time, yeah. there's got one last thing I want to talk to you yeah. about. Um, I want to talk about the Lake Show. And first, I want to say thank you um, because I think it's really cool when I have this opportunity to record these athletes um, be great um, and get to share these moments with, with everybody. Yeah. And I think one of the coolest things that's been uh, happening to me so far is like my old teachers or my old coaches will reach out to me and they'll hire me for a job. For example, like um, Dexter Toby over at yeah, Sydney, he's yeah, coaching yeah. volleyball right. and he's doing great over there. And then um, Coach uh, Walls, he hired me to do some photography for his quartet. Yeah. And then you reached out to me and hired me for this. So I just want to say thank you for the opportunity and, you know, uh, just believing in me to get this, this thing done. Um, and I just wanted to know what you thought about the lake show as a whole and why did you decide to reach out to capture all this season yeah um so obviously you know again i appreciate the thanks but none of that goes to me dude like like the work you put into it and and you know like i was kind of joking with cole like knowing you when you were you know that that little suave kid you know <laughs> back at back at riverside man was was just a cool thing i remember obviously you know some of your some of your media arts productions and things like that you know like you did a a highlight reel for lane willoughby what that that i remember like and so yeah you know i was just pretty much uh when I saw all the stuff you were doing for the uh, the Riverside football team, I was like, yeah, we got to get – like, we got to have them involved. And it was cool, like, especially because for the Riverside football team, obviously the Building the Ship episodes and things like that, like, it's cool to have that stuff documented, especially if it's historic. You know, like, that's something that those kids are never going to forget. And it's something they can look at it over and over. They can show whoever they want. And going through – the first year at Indian Lake when when we had so much talent that we were just young and um, we, like I said we finished 500 made it almost to the district finals um, I just told Coach O and it took some convincing I was just like hey man like like I want to talk to you about one of my former students Irvin Godinez dude he he has this thing where like he just produces some really cool stuff and I think it'll be really good for for our guys and for exposure to like people that might not even see about because like that behind the scenes stuff you know like all those locker room conversations you were able to capture yeah you know especially the ones with me and no, I'm just kidding <laughs> but uh, no you know it was just like I just I just thought for the work that that coach o does for the work that those boys do over there i was like we have to we have to yeah. have this you know memorialized sort of and um so i told i had to kind of convince coach o you know because i was like hey man like like i'll set everything up like i'll i'll handle all the communication like it won't be anything that you have to do other than pay for it you know right <laughs> but, but i was like it won't have to be anything you have to do like i will handle all the details i'll do all that stuff you know i don't mind and um he still was kind of like uh you know i don't know and i was like listen man like if we're thinking this team is going to be what it is like this is the year to do this you know what i mean like if like if we're saying that this is going to be our best chance to get out of here like why wouldn't we take the opportunity to do it now 
And then I said, I kind of like fibbed a little bit. I was like, and if we don't get him, somebody else is going to get him. So if we keep waiting, like we're not even going to have the chance to do it. We might as well just tell him yes, you know, and run <laughs> with it. And so, uh, so he kind of took a chance on me and, and you backed it up, you know, which, so again, I feel like I should be thanking you because I, I feel like you did us a favor, you know, more than anything. Like, cause for the amount of time it took, you know, like, like we got to steal, you know what I mean? And, <laughs> and, and, and so it was, it was, uh. It was really cool, man. I loved. I I would obviously love to see when those episodes would come out, and so thankfully, you know, like you'd give me some advance notice so I could watch them, you know, right when they came out or whatever. And and you know, obviously everybody everybody says this about you, you know, like super professional, you know, super well done, put time into the craft, you know. And, and I know that you wear a lot of hats now, you know, doing doing all the different mm. things you do. And so just just your willingness to like. Because I think that Anna game, you actually, you had a Christmas party or something. That yeah. Game. And so you had, like, for work or something. You yeah, were like, for work. You are like, yeah, you know, like, I might not be there Friday. And I was like, oh, Irv, you got to be here Friday, man. Like, we're about to break this record. Like, we need this on film. Yeah. And you were like, okay, I'll see if I can, you know, make it work and all this stuff. And so, dude, like I said, like, as, as, as much as I appreciate you always giving me the shout out, like, nah, that's, none of that's for me. Like, you did all that stuff. And. And it was cool. I didn't know how it would go, you know, like, because cause obviously I'd only seen your work with, like, the football, football videos and yeah. stuff. And I was like, well, you know, football's a little bit slower paced. Like, yeah. it might like it might be a little easier because you get breaks between everything. I was like, I don't know how he's going to – like, we play fast, dude. Like, yeah. we're, we're up and down. Mm. We're shooting a lot of threes, you know. Like, <laughs> we're, we're making some plays. And I was like, I don't know if you'll be able to capture it all. And, and you did, man. And, and it was from that first scrimmage with Greenview, you know, for that first episode yeah. all the way till. So, you know, that the the way it ended there with Versailles, man. I and and again, like I like I said to you in that text, like I just feel bad that it got cut short, you know, like probably all the kids do and all the coaches do and the community did. Um, because I think, you know, it's just the way it goes sometimes, right? It's just the way it goes. But I think, man, we we definitely um, are gonna look back at that at those videos, like those five yeah. episodes and and kind of cherish those moments because there is I think because I think you only came, you came to one away game maybe before the tournament. One, it the was Bell Bell Fountain, Fountain, yeah. yeah. And we had so you came to almost all of our home games. I, I think, think we, I made we it were to all yeah, of them. we were perfect at home except for St. Mary's. Oh, yeah. You know, so you got all those great memories. You know what I mean? Like and and not that recording some of the losses would have been mm-hmm. wouldn't have been good footage or yeah. good film. You know, but it was nice that we that we were almost perfect at home. You know, yeah. except for except for that little St. Mary's incident yeah. there. But uh, yeah, dude, I I love the Lake Show. Um, you know, it's, it's out of my hands now, you know, <laughs> but, but yeah, I hope, I hope that regardless of, of where you are and all this stuff, like, dude, just keep doing what you're doing, man. Cause it, it is really cool. The stuff that you're able to produce. And, and I know I, and this just goes to show how much I, how little I know about this stuff. You sent me that first video and yeah. you were like, here's like a 60 second clip of like all these really cool effects and highlights and stuff. And then here's like the, I, I don't remember if it was seven minutes, eight minutes, whatever of, yeah. of like the actual, mm-hmm. he's like, which one do you like? And I was like, can you just do that first one for like the whole thing? And yeah. he's like, no, that took me the longest. <laughs> so like, he's like, that 60 seconds took me like hours to do. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, well, yeah, I guess it is tougher than, than it looks, yeah. man. So, so I appreciate it, dude. Like everything i appreciate being on here you know I, you know this is this is kind of a cool little setup i never knew what this barn kind of represented over here <laughs> yeah. like i drive by it run by it all the time but yeah it's uh this is a cool thing dude so i appreciate it. and and you know hopefully somewhere down the road we'll we'll get to work together again I hope so. or or you'll be off doing bigger things and you won't have time for me <laughs> or you know whatever that might be you got yeah, anything no, else? It, it was a pleasure yeah. to hear your story man yeah. like, <laughs> it, the, it. the fact that you are a jackson center guy and i got to kind of rekindle like a memory that I completely forgot about was pretty cool. Yeah. And um, a memory you forgot about one that I buried. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we were going to talk yeah. about today. Yeah. No, man, but it was, yeah. it was a pleasure to hear your story yeah, and it. have you on here. Um, and really we just hope that the audience takes something away from this, you know what I mean? And, um, it was, it was great to meet you. It was great to hear your story and really do appreciate it. Yeah. I appreciate it too, guys. Like this was, this was really cool. Cole, nice meeting you as well. Irv, you know, you know how I feel about you. <laughs> Perfect. Peace. Right, that was awesome, man. Yeah, I appreciate it.
today's episode, I just wanted to give a huge shout out to our sponsor, Loco Bounce. Loco Bounce is found by Tim Arvin and Dalton Rockhold, and they do everything for bounce, bouncy house rentals to slide rentals to several other services. They service Bell Fountain, Logan County, and the surrounding areas. If you're, you or anybody is interested in Loco Bounce, look them up on Facebook or give 937-210-7881 a call.